Hello, and this is uh, Tech 406 again here with the with Windows Forward Groups 3.11. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do Windows 3.11. So let's start it up here, if you can see how everything works and looks. And this, unfortunately, the startup sound in Windows uh, there's no tada in Windows Forward Groups 3.11. I don't know why but there isn't. It wasn't installed and all it gives you is the chimes and that's what it uses as the uh, startup sound which is kind of weird but you know that's, uh, what, it ha that's what it has. Uh, so uh, it takes a long time to show the login screen. Not a long time but you know it takes a fair amount of time to show it. And here we are Windows 3.101 for workgroups. So we're gonna go about program manager here if you can see through one of workgroups and all that there. And under Windows Setup, you'll see I'm using the Super VGA 64840 256 color adapter. And then under File Manager, you'll notice that we have the network drives connected to my host computer with the same files from before, from the previous videos. And, un and weirdly enough, although this file does not open in Windows NT 3.1, it opens perfectly fine in Windows Workgroups 3.1 and Windows 3.1. So I don't know what happened to what happened to the MSP format in those versions. We're going to continue trying to open to open this file in newer versions of Windows to see which versions are compatible with MSP from Windows 2.0 and which ones aren't. So I'm kind of curious, to be honest. I'm really kind of curious on on that. So, um, but yeah, so we have that working now, and under here we have the set. We'll go to drivers. You'll see. You'll see the SB16 sound adapter we installed, and under network, you'll see you'll see all the information here for startup passwords and that, and their network, and you'll see the power adapters here, so that we're not using 100% CP usage here. And under network, under network setup. Oh, well, that's weird. Looks like I might have crashed. Huh. Oh, I think my mouse actually died. That's why. <laughs> yeah, my mouse died. <laughs> okay, so um, this is going to be interesting. I got to either change my mouse here, or um, actually, I can probably use the keyboard to navigate Windows. So let's just all just do that. So as you can see here, we have the uh, network. <laughs> what how embarrassing this is, but anyways. Um, so we have the network adapter as uh, when as the uh, TCP/IP there. You can see. I know I didn't want to navigate Windows luckily through a keyboard, so that's kind of nice. Um, under File Manager, I already showed that. And then we have the TCP IP uh, tools there. Um, uh, but yeah, so. And the audio stuff. And. Yeah, uh, the network stuff already showed, but yeah, so that is Windows for Workgroups 3.11, and that is what I'll be showing you how to, what how to uh, get configured in the in the next part of this video. So, hopefully, uh, this video was um, was helpful, and now I need to uh, stop the video. <laughs> and uh, okay, so I'll see. Uh, so, stay tuned for the next part of the video. Okay, so now we're going to proceed with the installation of Windows for Workgroups 3.11. Uh, and this shouldn't take too long at all. So we're going to first go to create a new virtual machine. We just call this one Win311. Keep it at Windows 3.1 and I'd recommend about 8 megs of memory. It doesn't really matter. You can put a bit more than that. 32 megs is recommended according to VirtualBox, but it's fine. You don't need too much more for this. And then create a new virtual drive. Press OK. And then press Create. And then we're going to go into the settings now and we're going to set a, set a few settings up here. So under System, turn off acceleration. And then under, under Storage, you want to put your disks in into place your installation media so that you can actually install your system. Here we want pulse we want to do pulse audio, which is kind of weird that it's automatically detected 
That's kind of good that it did. Well, that's weird that it did. Didn't do that before. Anyways, um, been set, we're going to set this to host only adapter to access the internal, the internal network. And we're going to disable the uh, USB. And press OK. And now we're going to start the virtual machine and start the installation. Okay, so we're going to go fdisk, mbr, then fdisk. We're going to create the partitions. Then we're going to run a, pro, a batch file called setup C. I'll show you what this what this does. So pause the video right now if you want to write this down and uh, be able to create the disk yourself. It's a pretty simple disk to create. There we go. We're all created. And now we can eject the DOS disk. We don't need this disk anymore. And then we can reboot into the C drive. And then go we go and now we go into we go find our installation media. Huh? Oh, that's why Windows. There we go. And then we run the setup program, and then setup. We'll, well, we'll just proceed through. Go continue. You want a custom setup? And accept those as default options, and let it proceed. It shouldn't take too long to go through this. It won't detect the network card. So we'll have to uh, place in the PC net disk image. And then we want us then we want to set up all components. We don't we want don't want to set up printers and no application on hard drive, continue. And then let it do its installation. Uh, for the most part, this shouldn't take too long. So Windows 3.11 for workgroups is a, is pretty good. It has it supports all the, all the Windows 3.1 features, plus it has better networking support, and it also um, so it's similar in a sense to the NT series, but it's not but it doesn't run NT technology though, so it's still based off of DOS. So if you can't get a hold of Win, if you can't get a hold of a copy of Windows NT 3.1 or 3.51. Then 3.11 for workgroups is probably the best way to go, um, because it might because it's the only because it's the only one that supports the better networking stuff. You want to be able to use networking or something like that inside your virtual machine. So we're gonna go um, colon slash Windows for workgroups 3.11. There's that. Enter, enter, enter. And then when it says bust the scan, be sure you select PCI and press OK. And then we'll leave all these for the defaults right now. We'll install the TCP IP after Windows is installed. And then press continue. And we're going to keep those as the defaults and let it just do its installation now. Let it install the network and make modifications for me. And the first thing we're going to do after we re after re after we do the restart is we're going to set up the APM driver uh, because we don't want Windows to take over all our CPU resources while we're doing everything else here. So, so we're going to wait, and we're going to first verify that Windows boots before we do anything else. So we're going to go Win, and once we can confirm that it's all working. So far, so good. Okay, so it works. So we're going to quit. 
and now we're going to install the APM driver. Unlike Windows 3.1, uh, the APM driver in Windows in uh, Windows for Workgroup 3.11 is a lot uh, is a lot easier to install. There's no finicking with the power with power dri expanding the power driver and all the other stuff. You just run setup and then just set it up by selecting um, MistOS system with APM. Press Enter, accept, enter. We're all done. Win. Now the networking com the networking component always takes quite a long time to get working. So, and if you don't save the password to the list, it's going to ask this every time. So I'm just going to put the password into the list just to make it easier. It's not recommended that you do that because the password is very easy to to get. It's in a PW it's in a PWL file, and that file is pretty uh, unsecure. So, <laughs> it's been known to be easily hackable. Okay, so the next thing we can next thing uh, we can do now is we will confirm that the power is indeed there by going to power, which is great. Okay, and now we're going to install the TCP/IP uh, set one. So we're going to close that. We're going to go into network. We're going to network setup here. We're going to go drivers. We're going to go add a protocol, unlisted protocol. And then we're going to, so on the D drive under TCP IP, you can find this stack pretty pretty easily online. Just search for Microsoft TCP IP 32 3.11b, and it should be you should be able to find it online pretty easily. And then we're going to remove these other protocols we don't really need for this. And then we're going to set up this protocol to use DHCP, and then press OK, and then go close. OK, and then restart the computer. OK, now that that's all done, we're going to do a win. I think next we're going to install the we're going to update the video update the video driver, and you can find these video drivers online pretty easily as well. Again, this will take a, it takes a second to start up the network. Unfortunately, Windows 3.11 is very slow for network startup. Yep, and now you have the TCP/IP stuff there. We have our network popped up there, right? Okay, so we're going to go into here, and I want to show you the contents of the of the video here. So this is a video program here. If the license is right then I can actually uh, distribute it. That's uh, on the Microsoft software license. I believe I could distribute this file pretty easily to anyone that might need this file. Um, yeah you should be able to find this. These are patch drivers for certain to make it work. I, don't, I can't remember where I found them again but they're online in various places, so you can search online and they're pretty easy to find. So we're going to install that right now so that we have better video quality. So we're going to go change system settings, VGA, all the way down to the bottom, OEM disk. We're going to go D, video, and we're going to select Super VGA 64480, 200 images as colors. OK, restart. Whoa, OK, that's weird. And valid VDX dynamic call. This never happened. Um, hmm. Uh, let's go no for now. And then we're gonna do we're gonna do a full on uh, restart and see what happens here. We're gonna do a full reset. And we're gonna see if it occurs again. There, it didn't happen this time. That's very weird. <laughs> Very strange. And again, the network takes uh, 
a while to load. There we go. Okay, and then now we're going to go for the, we're going to make sure that the driver is updated. Okay, good. Okay, and now we're going to install the uh, Sound Blaster. In order to install Sound Blaster, we sort of have to run sysedit and do a few modifications here. We're going to remove Smart Drive. We don't need that in the virtual machine so much. We're going to cut that. We're going to paste that there. We're going to remove those. We're going to delete that. And we're going to close this file. Yes. Then we're going to remove this. Delete that. Cut this. Paste there. Clean this file up a little bit. Remove Smart Drive. And then at the very bottom, go DOS. High upper memory block. There we go. And then close that file. Save it. Yes. Close. And then close this. And then we're going to do a reboot. And then get ready to install the Sound Blaster drivers. Because Sound Blaster the install program needs a good amount of conventional memory just to install. So you have to be able to do, you have to set it to DOS high up memory block in order for that to work. DOS high is more important than memory block actually. But so let's go into Sound Blaster install directory. And then install. It'll take a few moments. We'll detect the card and then do the install. If you saw the Windows 3.1 installation, you probably would recognize this. This is very similar. And I'm so excited to do all the versions of 95 that I'll be doing in, uh, up ahead because they're all the same thing almost. <laughs> you know, there's not many differences between all the versions. There's not many, but I guess we'll find. I guess we'll see the various differences. And then press F10 at this point to reboot. And now we have our Sound Blaster installed. And then this video is almost coming to an end. We'll start up. And we'll just do a simple connect of the um, of the network just to confirm that the uh, network is definitely working here which it should be and we're good to go and in future videos I'm going to show various desktop applications for for Windows 3.11 like uh, for example the extremely popular Calmira uh, back in the day and there's also uh, IBM also created a uh, a workspace for Windows which is basically workplace uh, the work that uh, basically that word that that workplace um, thing in OS 2 they built a version for Windows 3.1 and 1.1 it doesn't work so well in NT but it works very nicely in uh, in there and I'll show you the I'll show you various shells in future videos and how the shells work and how you can install the shells and how to configure the various shells to make Windows 3.1 and 1.1 more to your liking I'll probably use 3.11 over 3.1 just because 3.11 is definitely the the better version. So we're going to go into here and we're going to map a drive. You can also map a drive through the command line as well. That should also work. We're going to actually try that with the other drive. So we're going to go E. For E we're going to go LM serve and we're going to put that as data. And we're going to confirm that that works. Which it does. And then for the next one and in VirtualBox you should always have, you should always force windowed modes for the command prompts or you're going to have major issues when you try to use them so it's very much recommended to use the windowed mode for the command prompts so we're going to open up the command prompt in windowed mode here and we're going to alter the font because I don't like that font there we go we're going to stretch it bigger and now we're going to try net to use f l l m l m serve and then we're going to go to inbox. Ta da! And it's faster than using that. And then in File Manager, it's also available there too. Go into File Manager, you'll see both connected drives up at the top. Perfectly fine. And there you have it. That is the setup of Windows 3. Point, Windows Workgroups 3.11. Hope this video has helped you install it. Until next time.